What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis. Of course, this is TWA Motorsports and today we are back on the green truck. Now, um, you guys know if you've been watching or keeping up that we got rid of the old wheels. Well, we didn't really get rid of them. We just moved them over to the Tahoe and I do like the way that's looking, but uh, I did get new wheels there in the back of the truck, but no, I'm not showing you that in this video. We need to do something with the brakes. And so that is what we are going to be doing today. In the last video on this truck, we cleaned up these inner fenders and they are looking a lot nicer. So now we need to move on to the brakes because these are just not gonna cut it. You're gonna be able to see a lot more of the brakes once I get these new wheels on. And so I wanted to address how crappy they looked. And to be quite honest with you, they're, I think they're, they're probably okay uh, as far as life left in them, but they just don't look good. So I wanna mess with that today. So that's what we're gonna be doing. And what we are going to be using is a kit that I've used several times before, and that is the power brake kit or power stop kit. And uh, I will list, like always guys, all of this stuff in the description down below. I opted for uh, rotors and pads. Uh, like I said, I don't think my rotors are bad, but that zinc wash on these rotors make things stay a lot nicer, especially on the hats. So these areas right here that are really rusty and then around the vents here. So um, those areas, I could have probably painted my factory ones, had them turned and uh, just went with pads, but I just wanted to look it to look a lot nicer. To be quite honest with you, this is a six cylinder truck right now and uh, it doesn't really need a performance brake kit, but uh, like I said, I went, went with it for those reasons. But kind of my goal here, guys, is uh, as you saw from the thumbnail, we're gonna paint the calipers. Now, when I did my Trans Am up here, you guys can see it, I opted to buy the kit that came with new calipers and they're already powder coated. But uh, I, I didn't wanna do this because they only have red as the option and I didn't really want red on this truck. So you'll see here later in the video what we're going to be using. I don't actually have it yet. I'm starting this before I actually get the paint. So, uh, but I did not want to go with red. I just think that's too much contrast, the green and uh, the wheels that I chose and all that. So uh, let's get started. What we're going to do is we're going to take, uh, basically I'm going to take the brake uh, pads out. I'm going to take the rotors off. I'm going to take the pads out. I'm gonna take all the hardware, so like your uh, stainless hardware here, I'm gonna take all of that out, and then we're going to bolt the rotor, or the caliper, I'm sorry, back up to uh, its mounting position so I have a good stable spot to hold it while I paint. Now, um, that is kind of the process that we're gonna start with, is getting all this old stuff apart, and then we're gonna kind of clean up what we've got here. So as I go along, I'll obviously talk about the sizes that you need, and all the products that I'm using. So I'm gonna start with the front up there and get it going. And uh, well, then we'll move to the back and I won't show you guys the other side because it's gonna be pretty cramped as you can see. Uh, I've got, I'm kind of cramped for space. But uh, I'm gonna go grab my stuff, my chair, and we'll get started in the front. So as I said, we're starting up here in the front and you're going to need a T55 to get the caliper slide bolts loose. Uh, I don't really understand why the older stuff has that, but they've since went to bolts in the newer stuff. But uh, make sure it's the right size, guys, because if you try the wrong size, you're gonna strip them out and then you're gonna have a mess. And then the actual bracket here uh, itself is an 18 millimeter. So we're gonna pop those loose. Once we get that loose, like I said, we'll be able to get the brake pads out of the way, all the hardware, and then get that rotor out of the way. So now that we got the rotor off, we need to go ahead and take the brake pads out. And then we'll take that hardware off. Just so I have some more room to paint. It's not a huge deal. Uh, it does come with all new rubber boots as well. I'm gonna leave those for now. And um, I'm just gonna kinda paint around those. But the cool thing is there's only really two pieces of hardware there and uh, I'm going to clean this up with some um, brake clean 
before I put it back in place. So I'll take it off camera here and spray some brake clean on it. But I am going to be using some brake clean with it on the truck. Uh, I don't really want to crack these lines, guys. I went back and forth on buying new lines, and my lines are in good shape. So I really don't think, I mean, there are there are some people that would replace these with some stainless line. But like I said, um, for this truck, I think we're just going to keep the stock rubber lines and um, kind of paint around things. So I'm going to go clean these off off camera here, and uh, then we'll bolt it back together. And we'll have, a, like I said, a good steady, good steady surface to clean and uh, scrub things down and then eventually paint. So like I said, I took those out and just sprayed them down with some brake clean. I suggest using gloves, guys. It actually, it absolutely wrecks a set of gloves too, that brake clean does. But now we can put them back into place. And um, then we'll get the actual caliper mounted. And we'll have some room to paint, hopefully. Because like I, I'm not going to concern myself while I'm painting with the um, like the inner workings here. So like your area inside here that doesn't really need to be painted anyway, I'm not going to paint that. So um, generally I take these all apart, take the lines off, take them out and hang them up and paint them. But I'm going to be brushing this on. So I want something stable, like I said, to paint with. And I also want something that is um, meant to be used for calipers. You could also see I put a bucket there just because I didn't want a bunch of pressure on my brake line. And I think this will give me ample room to paint. Looks like it anyway. And I'm not going to get crazy. I'm not going to tighten these back down. Probably just put them finger tight for now. Now that we have it bolted in place, you can see I have room to grab the backside here and move to paint in areas that maybe I wouldn't be able to access normally. Now I am going to paint the backside. I don't know how much of that you guys are going to be able to see when I get started, but, um, I'm not, obviously I'm not going to be able to get areas where this mates to the spindle and, um, maybe a couple areas where the bolts are at, but all in all, I'll be able to get a majority of access to where I'm at. But now that we've got that in place, uh, I'm gonna move on to the back, we'll get it apart, and then we'll start the cleaning process. A majority of this is gonna be brake clean, uh, but I think I am gonna scuff it a little bit, try to get the big stuff. I might use a wire brush, uh, but we'll go to the back, get the back off, and uh, then we'll come back up and start cleaning this all up. Now that we're on to the back, um, 12 millimeter, so it's not the same T55 like the front is, which is nice. And uh, depending on what model truck you have, uh, mine is a single rear caliper or single rear piston caliper. They make a dual. So uh, the, the parts that I'm going to list in the description below will be for a single rear caliper. So uh, make sure that you guys check that before you order. Uh, but the other one may be a little different. I'm not sure if the dual caliper is a 12 millimeter here, but the actual mounting bolts for the bracket are still 18. So at this point we have them all mounted back up and as you can see they're sturdy but we need to clean them up and um, the kit that I'm using does come with some brake cleaner but I'm gonna go a little further than that I am gonna use brake cleaner first and I'm gonna use a wire brush and uh, I'm gonna go over them uh, probably a couple times with the brake clean and then once I do the brake clean I'm gonna go over them with some like Dawn dish soap to try to knock off any grease or grime that might be on there and then uh, I'm gonna let them set and dry uh, and then I'm going to go over them one more time with some more brake clean. So that is kind of going to be my process of doing this. I don't, I might scuff these a little with a Scotch Brite, but they're pretty textured. I don't think we're going to have any issue. And uh, we are going to be brushing it on. So um, I, don't, I don't think it's, for one, it's not paint that's reflective that you really look down, like you don't look down the side of a brake caliper and see how smooth it is. Now, if you guys wanted to take the time and, 
and scrub these down and then actually sand them to make them like a mirror finish, then by all means that that's something that you can do. But I'm not going to get that detailed on this. I do want them to look better, but I don't really care that they're, you know, this kind of has a uh, orange peel type look to it anyway. So anyway, we're going to start with the brake clean. And I'll kind of time lapse this pro time lapse this process, showing you the brake clean and then the Dawn dish soap with just like a little toothbrush getting into some of these areas. And then, like I said, I'm not going to concern myself with where the brake pad is in here uh, because I'm not going to be painting that. But uh, like I said, I'll time lapse it so you guys don't have to watch me scrub and scrub and scrub. And uh, then, well, then we'll be able to move on to the painting process. So I think before I go over it with um, like some Dawn dish soap and like a brush, I am going to use a red Scotch-Brite and kind of scuff up the, uh, the main areas that I'm going to be worried about looking good. So you don't have to do this. This is just an extra process that I'm going to do. Um, and then I'm going to go over it with brake clean again to clean off kind of the dust and the junk that I'm making when I do this. And um, then we will go on to like the Dawn dish soap method, which uh, should get all the grease and the rest of the junk I don't want on here off. There's uh, quite a bit of dust though. Just, I'm sure these have been on here for 150,000 miles and the back ones actually look somewhat new. The wheel cylinder in the back looks new anyway. So I'd say the back has been messed with before and the brakes didn't look that bad. So. We'll just go over this lightly. Like I said, don't don't have to do this step if you don't want to. It's just extra step that I'm going to take. Now I've got my bucket of water here and some Dawn dish soap and we are just going to kind of scrub this down and then I will follow it up with some brake cleaner. Um, not a whole lot left. I might go over it a couple times with this, I don't know. We'll just see how the, uh, the bubbles look. You can kind of tell if the bubbles are kind of dirty, you might want to go over it a couple times I guess, but if they're not, then I wouldn't concern myself with um, getting too crazy on this step. My bubbles are kind of dirty in some sections, but that may just be because I couldn't get to them with my wire brush. And of course the areas on the bottom are going to look worse than the areas on the top because everything's running to the bottom. The best way to do this, guys, is to take these off, but I didn't want to crack the brakes and have to re-bleed them. I mean, I know that's not a huge deal, but um, I don't know. It just seems like brake fluid always squeezes out and uh, ends up wrecking the paint in some areas. And then, I don't know. I just decided to do this method instead. But believe me, painting them hanging up uh, is a lot more thorough than what I'm doing here. I would still go through the same cleaning process but may be able to access areas a little nicer. So I've decided to take one more step and that is I'm gonna take some lacquer thinner on one of these uh, shop towels and I'm gonna just wipe everything down really good and uh, it's probably gonna be a day or so before I get the paint. So uh, it's gonna have plenty of time to dry. And as you can see, I cleaned up underneath already. So um, 
I think this will be my last step. Like I said, I'm gonna go over each one individually with this lacquer thinner here. And uh, we should be ready to, to paint. I say spray, we're not gonna spray it. We'll be ready to uh, start brushing this paint on. Well guys, it's been a couple days and I got my paint in. So what we are using is a product from G2 and I will list this in the description down below as well. It is mixed to paint match my truck. So that is the color that we're going with. Some of the stuff the kit comes with, comes with a stir stick, a brush, uh, of course instructions and some G2 stickers. And uh, it comes with the paint and then it comes with an activator. So what you do is you pour the activator into the paint once you start that process, you are on a time crunch of about four to six hours, I believe it says. And it also says that you have enough to do three coats. So I'm gonna use it until it's completely gone. It also comes with some cleaner, which is just brake clean. I will tell you guys, if you're dealing with older brakes, that is not nearly enough. And that is why I bought an entire case of brake cleaner. I wanna make sure everything is really clean. The other complaints that I've seen online is the brush sucks and uh, you can see it already has little hairs coming out of it so i did buy an assortment of better brushes but uh, basically all we're going to do is we're going to pour this activator in here and we're going to get started painting uh, i'm going to probably put the top back on and just shake it up i don't i don't know i, don't, I might stir it up but uh, i did go ahead and get everything prepped down here as you guys know i've already cleaned it but i did tape off some of my brake lines and um, the bleeder here is taped off other than that, I've got some stuff on the floor just to try to keep uh, any excess paint off my garage floor. It's not like my garage floor is in great shape, but uh, I really don't want a bunch of paint on it. I will tell you guys this is going to be a process because obviously there's a lot of nooks and crannies here. So you're going to be moving all around. So I, hopefully you guys are going to be able to see a majority of me painting on this. Like I said, we are brushing it on. So that makes it a little bit easier not getting stuff all over everything. But we've got a really nice day today. It's 65 degrees, which is crazy for December. So uh, I'm gonna set you guys up on the tripod. I'll probably just time lapse this because honestly painting is probably pretty boring to watch. So I'll make this pretty painless for you guys. Once we get that, uh, we're gonna start here in the front, go to the back, and then obviously I gotta do the other side. Once we do all those, it needs a 15 minute at least cure time before you start the second coat. Uh, I'll try to show you guys between coats so you can kind of see what it looks like before we start the second coat. But I'm gonna get you on the tripod and let's get going. Let's take a look after one coat and I'm, guys, I'm kind of surprised. It actually covered way better than I thought with just one coat. Now I am gonna go over it with a second coat. I probably am not gonna show you guys that. I will tell you that, is this the best way to do it? I don't know guys, I really think I'm picky so I wanted to take the whole thing off. But for a daily driver application, I don't know that it gets much better than this. Uh, you're not having to worry about bleeding the brakes or doing any of that stuff. So. I'm pretty impressed. I'm pretty impressed with the coverage. It looks spot on match the, with the paint. It, it just looks really, really good. I'll try to get back out here where there's, turn this light off so it's not, actually I might use it to show you guys. It's hard to get in some of these areas and you can see I missed a spot up top there, but uh, that's why I'm gonna go over it with a second coat. Um, I've, it's probably taken me about, I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes per uh, caliper to do this so it does take a little bit of time and uh, as you guys know we put that activator in there so we are on borrowed time so I'm gonna switch brushes I'm gonna go over it a second time I'm not sure I'm gonna do a third coat I might end up doing a third coat I might just go until the stuff's gone and um, you know go back and look for areas that I might have missed but I can always get some touch-up paint for this and uh, you know if I missed a spot on the spots that you're gonna see with the wheel on I can always touch those up because 
you know, rocks are going to kick up and scratch it. But I'm pretty impressed, guys. So I will show you guys once we are all finished up. And um, then we can move on to assembling the brakes once all this is dried. But I will show you guys before we do that, uh, kind of the finished product. We are now all finished up with what I would call two and a half coats. So the second coat, uh, I went ahead and went over trying to catch all the areas that I missed. And you know, like I said, it's kind of hard to paint it with it on. But I did get around the back side, which I, it, there's no way I can like show you guys. But there's still going to be areas that you're just not going to be able to get to just because um well everything's in the way but i did do a light what i would call third coat i guess you could call it and i did that on these areas that are facing uh that you're going to see the most of so i didn't concern myself with the back side on the third coat and then i took a light i closed my garage turned all the lights off and i used a light to look at every little spot that you could possibly see on the front making sure and some of these points where these are pressed together or broken out of the mold uh, it's really rough and so some of those areas did require some additional touch up and I just used a small brush for that but all in all guys I am really really impressed with the way you know a lot of times when you paint with a brush you see a lot of brush strokes and I like I said this thing is pretty textured if this were nice and smooth chances are it may not come out as good you may have to spray it to make it look nice but it levels out very very well so I am impressed and uh, time will tell once we get the brakes on whether it will hold up uh, I think that it probably will. I don't think this light is doing you guys any justice. In fact, I'll just put it beside me here. But now um, the instructions call for two hours of cure time before you put the wheels back on, which uh, I'm going to let it cure way longer than that. It'll probably be a day or so before we actually take this apart. It says 24 hours before driving, but it'll probably be a couple days. You guys will notice that. I'll be in the same video. But uh, in a couple days, I'm going to put the brakes all back together. Of course, I'll show you guys that process as I'm doing it. Um, but like I said, I'm pretty impressed with this product. Never used it before. And uh, hopefully it doesn't let me down when we actually start driving it. But it does look a lot better. So it's been a couple days now and I've allowed this to dry. It's probably been uh, four days now. So I'm sure it's good and dry at this point. So we're ready to start reassembling. So the very first thing I'm going to do is obviously take my 18 I'm going to take um, <clears throat> or the 18 and the T55 get the caliper off and set it on my bucket here with the towel I just don't want to scratch it up and um, once we get the caliper out of the way and the bracket out of the way then we can go ahead and put our new rotor into place and start this whole reassembly process and I'll talk about the torque specs as I go but we're gonna go ahead and get this stuff out of the way once I get that out of the way though like I said we'll grab the rotor and the pads and talk about how we're gonna put it back together. Now that we have that out of the way, we have our rotor and guys, these are side specific. As you can see, hopefully you guys can see front driver side. And I always like to take a little bit of brake clean on a rag and just clean off any shipping oils or whatever they may have on it. Um, these aren't quite like the more factory style. They don't generally ship with a bunch of junk on them, but I clean them anyway, and uh, believe me, it's easier to clean them like this than it is on the truck. So, once we do that, we're going to set it into place, and we're going to take a look at our bracket here, because our bracket, as you can see, there's no paint on the back side. That's the downside to painting them on the truck, is you can't get paint everywhere, but the stuff that we're going to see will definitely be painted. Um, it does come with new rubber pieces here, so we will be replacing uh, those. And these are kind of stuck on because of the paint. So we're going to replace those, and then obviously our guides that snap in, we'll be replacing those as well. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and slide those into place. We got our new hardware here, and. Um, I think that's all on this actual bracket. Now, once we do that, obviously, we'll go ahead and bolt the bracket back into place. I am going to use a little bit of thread lock, just some blue thread lock. As you can see, the factory does use some thread lock on these. I'm going to use some blue, not red, because red's a little tight. If you ever wanted to take this back apart, believe me, you don't want to be trying to take it apart with red Loctite on it. So we'll get these snapped into place, and uh, then we'll move on to bolting more of this stuff together, and then we'll get the brake pads in. So we've got the new rubber boots on, and we have the new uh, stainless hardware. 
and I'm going to go ahead and get this thing set up into place. And like I said, I'm going to use a little bit of blue Loctite. I'm not going to use a ton to get these or make sure that they don't back out. I've never had one back out before, but there's a reason GM puts a little bit of Loctite on it. I will tell you guys when I was taking this apart, I had a heck of a time with the other side. So obviously when I lowered this thing, I did put some on there, but I don't remember. I'm pretty sure I would have used blue, but maybe I didn't. Maybe I used red. I don't think I would have done that though. I'm just going to get these started. We'll talk about torque specs when we get more of the brakes set up. They look really, really good too after a couple days of drying. They have a ton of shine look really nice I'm pretty like I said I'm pretty impressed with this paint I didn't know what it was gonna be like because I've never used it before but it seems to be pretty good stuff we'll just snug these down for now Now that we have that finished, let's grab some pads. And these pads, make sure you're putting in the correct way. They all look identical. So try to match them up with your old ones. One of them has two, the other one has one. These are like your wear indicators. So they make noise as the brakes start to wear. And try not to get a bunch of junk all over your hands while you're putting these into place. But I will tell you guys that I like to put a little bit of caliper grease on these slides. So I'm gonna grab some of that and just get it into place. I'm just going to put a little bit basically in this channel on each one of these pads. Now, I also like to put a little bit on the on this piece here just to keep it from rattling. They do have anti-rattle built in, but uh, just from doing this several times, uh, definitely on the back side where the piston's touching, and then obviously there's a window cut out here. You don't want it to be where the window's at because it obviously isn't touching there. So I'll put a little bit on the inside of the actual caliper itself. So hopefully you guys can see that just a little bit, nothing crazy. And like I said, you're making sure not to get that on the rotor and you don't want it on the face of the pad either. And then we'll get this slid into place. There's that side. And we're going to do the same thing for the back side, which obviously you guys aren't going to be able to see. Now that we got that back pad in, we're ready to put this back on. Now, the problem with that is chances are it's not going to fit unless... I don't know how much my brakes were worn and they weren't. So, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to compress these pistons in. And so the way I like to do that is I like to grab the old brake pad. And I'm going to attempt to do this without scratching up my new paint. Uh, I didn't get a lot of paint on the back side of this just because I couldn't reach a lot of it, but uh, I really don't want to scratch it. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my old pad and I'm going to use one of these guys to compress those pistons back in, giving me enough room to slide it over. Now, if I were putting the factory brakes back in, sometimes they do push out when you take them apart, but if they didn't push out, uh, you may be able to sneak your rotor back into place. But Unfortunately, we got quite a bit thicker brakes because mine were about half worn down 
So we are gonna have to compress those pistons in order to get this back on. I won't show you guys that process because I'm gonna be trying to keep from scratching, like I said, but I will show you when I put the rotor back on, or sorry, the caliper back on. So now that those pistons are compressed, we are ready to put this guy back into place, hopefully. Yeah. I have to take them in quite a ways, guys. So, we are in business. And I don't know if you, hopefully you guys can see, I did put a little bit of caliper grease right here in the center. Now we're ready to put the pins back in, the guide pins. Now, I like to give them a good coat. If they're rusty, either replace them or clean all the rust off. And then I like to give them a good coat of caliper grease as well. Just so no issues with them sliding or doing anything weird. Now that we have the bolts in, everything's set up, we need to torque this down. So 38 is for the guide bolts, the T55, 38 foot pounds. And then 129 is what you're going to use for the two 18 millimeters that hold the caliper bracket into place. So make sure that, um, and, and these are specs that I found online and um, I looked a couple places. I, I generally have a GM buddy, but he wasn't around to give me the actual specs. So uh, 38 and 129. Do not do the T55 to 129. It will break. Don't do that, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and torque these down, and then we will move to the back. So obviously now we're in the back, and you could see some areas where obviously I couldn't get paint. I couldn't reach those. But those are areas you're not going to see, and it really isn't going to matter. But I did go ahead and take the bracket off and um, obviously the caliper. So now we need to put the rotor into place, which we are going to do. Like I said, make sure that you get the right side because you don't want to have it going the wrong direction. So I'm gonna spray this caliper down, clean it off real quick. Once I do that, then we will get uh, it into place. And I'm actually gonna use a lug nut um, to hold things a little more steady. I don't know if you guys noticed in the front, the rotor was rocking around and uh, I'm gonna have it kind of cinched down. That way it gives me a little bit more, um, well, it's not moving while I'm trying to tighten up the calipers. Now, one thing um, you can replace are the slides here. Uh, mine are in good shape. I took them out and put some more um, caliper grease in them. You wanna make sure that they're sliding good because that's what moves the brake back and forth. But we are ready to put our new hardware into place, make sure that it gets seated properly. And for some reason, I'm guessing because this kit fits multiple applications, I noticed that um, they sent me two brackets. So you're gonna use the ones that actually fit. I'll show you here. You grab one. You can see there's a huge difference. Obviously that one doesn't fit. I'm guessing on the calipers that are dual piston in the back. So some of the bigger trucks have a dual piston rear caliper. This is obviously a single. Um, I'm guessing that's what those are for and it's just all the same kit. My guess is the brake size is the exact same, but we are good on those. So we're gonna go ahead and mount this bracket up. I am gonna use a little bit of Loctite just like I did in the front on the caliper bolts and um, then once we get this on, we'll go ahead and put a little bit of grease, caliper grease in these slide pockets here. But I like to do that after I get it on, that way I'm not getting it on the rotor as I'm trying to get it into place. Now that we got that on, and it's just snug down, I haven't tightened it up yet, we are to we'll torque it at the end, but we're ready to put our brake pads in. I may have to tighten it down a little bit more so it's not moving around on me, but there's one. And they're not really different other than the fact that the uh, wear indicator is in a different position. So just make sure that um, you have two that are on this side and two that are on the other side. So just you want to make sure that it's even on both sides. Not It's not really a huge deal if you mix these up because they're the exact same. Uh, same thing with the front. But I'm going to go ahead and slide this in. And then we'll move the caliper into place. And... Uh, Oh, I've got to show you one more thing. We do have to put one of these guys in the top of the caliper. 
Uh, it's just an anti-rattle bracket like I talked about. And uh, then we'll be ready to put the caliper into place. Now you can see all this does is it pushes in. Now it does come with two of these as well. Um, and the other one is quite a bit bigger and it is a different design. So just take a look at the ones you pulled out. This one has four tabs pointing up, whereas this one only has two. Pretty sure same thing, same situation there that one of those is meant for the um, dual caliper. Now, the last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little bit of this caliper grease on the back of this pad just to keep things from rattling. And then I'm going to put a little bit on the inside of this as well. Now we're ready to tighten these down. <clears throat> just going to snug them down for now. And we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to do 38 foot pounds on these guys, the slide bolts. And we're going to do 129 on the um, caliper bracket. And if your centerpiece is spinning here, guys, a lot of like that's what's happening down at the bottom here. Um, if this center section is spinning, a 17 millimeter seems to fit on the back here. The front doesn't have that problem, but this guy does. So I'm going to go ahead, torque this down. Like I said, 38 on the slide bolts, the 12 millimeters, and then 129 on the um, caliper bracket bolts. So we are completely finished up. Everything is torqued down in the back as well as the front. And guys, what a huge difference. Let me know in the comments what you think. I know it's hard to tell in this lighting, but it's dark, it's raining, and I just can't, I mean, open the garage wouldn't help any. I know I'm probably getting some echo on this as well, but I think it looks a ton better. I'm really impressed with this paint. Even though I couldn't get to the areas, as you could see in the back, those aren't areas you're gonna see with the wheels on anyway. I know that's not like me, I'm pretty picky, but uh, I didn't wanna take all these brakes off. When you take the brakes off to paint them, inevitably stuff runs out and it gets on your new paint and it strips that area. So I, I just didn't wanna mess with that. Now you can buy some caps that go in there that help that, but uh, I also didn't want red, so I didn't opt for the rotor option, or sorry, the caliper option um, with this kit. They do make a kit and I'll also include that in the description down below if you want to buy one that comes with red calipers already done uh, obviously the kit's more expensive because it comes with more parts but uh, everything that i use today guys i will list in the description down below but i think uh, it looks great so let me know what you guys think there are a couple things that you need to know when you're doing this though obviously we had to compress um, that piston, that's a dual piston up front, we compress those two pistons up front and the one in the back. So the very first time you go to back out, just know that you need to pump up your brakes a little bit because it is not making contact at this point. So um, it's you could potentially run into something. So be very careful. Make sure you pump up the brakes, get some uh, contact here before you go driving out. The next thing you have to do, and I'm not going to do in this video, and I'm not even going to show you guys this process. I did this on my Trans Am. I did show the process, but you do have to bed the pads and that is a process that they print on the box. They either will include it in a separate sheet or have it printed on the box here, but basically five, 40 to 10 kind of aggressive stops followed by um, a little bit of cooling and then 35 to five, five of those, and then five minutes of driving uh, basically to let that cool down without touching the brakes. So that's very hard to do. You need an area uh, where you have enough real estate to obviously do that. But guys, we are finished for today. And um, in the next video, we are going to show you the wheels that are under the cardboard. I can't, I can't give you guys everything in one video. So in the next video on this truck, we will be showing you the wheels and uh, we'll put those on. We'll go out and drive this thing, get some good shots of it. I'm really excited to show you guys. I'm wanting to drive this truck. I still have not gotten it aligned. So basically, since it's been back from paint, I've driven it maybe five miles and that was back from the guy's house so I need to get it aligned and start driving this thing, guys. I want to get back to driving it, get on some other cars. And uh, like I said, when I do that, I will basically after I do the wheel video, the next video after that on this truck, I'm going to go through a rundown of what I have spent so far, basically from start to finish. We'll call this stage one. Obviously, I want to do some more stuff to this, but um, that's going to be in the future. I want to get some other stuff knocked out before I go any further. But I will give you guys an update. A lot of you guys have been asking how much the paint costs. Um, how much was this? How much was that? So I will give you guys an update 
after we do the wheel video. Other than that, guys, I have used these brakes on several things. They're on my 52 pickup. Obviously, they're on my Trans Am. Huge difference in looks. Um, mainly, the main reason, like I said, I went with these is this zinc wash. These have been on here for probably a thousand miles. They look just as good as the day I put them on. So that is the main reason I went with that. Probably didn't need to do all that, but it looks a lot better. Like I said, let me know what you guys think in the comments, guys. If you do like this video, though, like always, guys, smash that thumbs up button. If you're not subscribed, I'm not sure what you're doing. You have to go subscribe, guys, because we have a ton of stuff coming on all these vehicles. We got some new Tahoe stuff coming very soon. And uh, I know you guys are liking the Tahoe slash truck stuff. I do, too. Believe me, I love working on all these cars. But um, while you're down there subscribing, guys, make sure you ring that bell icon. That notifies you every time we drop a new video. And stay tuned because you never know. I might buy another car, sell another car, or... Who knows what we'll do next?